This is called dog shit. I always thought I was a dog person. They're affectionate, they're loyal, they're furry, and they've got big brown eyes. I was wrong. I had left it too long. I had a dog once, not Meg, a Labrador mongrel bitch from the age of three until I was 16. Well, I say she was a bitch, but she was always very nice to me. On the day of my intercert English exam, the vet let me push down the plunger of the needle. Her back legs had given out and she was hauling herself along the ground, so we had to put her down. I haven't had a dog since. This week, I've been looking after my girlfriend's parents' dogs, Buddy and Rossi. One is a refined statesman amongst dogs who retains his dignity even when taking a dump on the neighbor's lawn. That's Buddy, a 14-year-old gun dog who's like a Springer Retriever crossbreed. Buddy is on his last tour, but loves company and sleeps contentedly at your feet or outside any door you're on the other side of. He's totally deaf, so you have to stay within sight or he gets all lonesome. He is a lovely doggy. Then there's Rossi, who is a purebred sheepdog, which is to say he is a terrorist. If his mum and dad weren't brother and sister, I'd be very surprised. He is a two-year-old, mentally ill, passive-aggressive, sexually deviant, wheedling, cowardly bully of a dog. Pure breed or not, to me, Rossi's like a cross between a hyena, a tree monkey, a Susan of Greyhound, and a large helping of fucking Egypt. I hate this dog. He is my nemesis. I've never had a nemesis before, and of course it would have to be a dog. I used to like dogs. What happened? Rossi constantly demands pats and attention and has no ability to amuse himself. I wake in the morning to feel someone licking my lips. Am I to reasonably assume that this is my girlfriend and she has forgot to brush her teeth last night, or Rossi! He jumps from the bed into the laundry basket and emerges with a pair of Joe's pants on his head like a bandana. Purple's quite fetching on him. Rossi! He follows me everywhere, ready to jump up at any moment, especially should I give Buddy any attention. Then he'll force his nose in between my hand and his old rival. I can't wear a dressing gown when I'm having breakfast because he'll spend breakfast time in my crotch. In his first moments in the house, he trotted into the living room and pissed on a plant by the fireplace. It's a fake plant, Rossi. Just because it looks like nature doesn't mean you're outside, you little bastard. He's on a round-the-clock campaign to usurp Buddy. He steals his food, his mat, he nips at him, licks his eyes, which Joe's mum thinks it's him just being nice, and last thing at night, tries to ride him. Buddy and Rossi normally sleep together in a utility room. It's like sharing a cell with a serial rapist. So at our house, we separate the young offender from the elder victim. I put Rossi in the hall and give Buddy the kitchen. Buddy does his last round and round fictional grass flattening turn and settles down for the night. Ah, a blissful, rape-free sleep. What luxury. This is a good test run for us getting a dog of our own. We've discussed it. I argue that both of us are too busy to properly care for one. That it's unfair to leave a dog alone in the back garden or kitchen until we come in from work. That we're not settled yet and we don't know where we'll end up. She argues that we could give a loving home to a rescue dog from the dog pen that's going to get destroyed anyway. That an older dog would be happy with peace during the day and company and walks in the evening. Imperfect life versus permanent implacable death. She has a point. But so do I. Deadlock. Rossi is not helping to swing it her way. The day starts with their morning run on the green. This involves me letting them piss on everything in a mile radius, while they narrowly avoid getting knocked down by all the people driving to work. We play throw the tennis ball for half an hour, and then it's back to base camp. I give them smelly bones, Joe's mum left from the butcher to keep them occupied in the morning, which they don't immediately pounce on, but end up gnawing on them within half an hour. But by about 11 a.m., I feel guilty about leaving them alone, so go downstairs and work in the same room. Rossi's wet nose is never more than three centimetres from my hand, laptop screen, or, or cup of tea. When he gets bored of me just sitting there, he goes back to his day job of mounting surprise attacks on Buddy. I play referee and he's won. Concentration shattered and attention diverted back to nuisance dog. I take a break to sweep the floor. And he goes berserk. He's either afraid of the brush or finds it sexually arousing. Or a bit of both. He attacks it as I sweep. Most of the molted dog hair ends up stuck to his nose, which makes him do bark sneezes, which is something I've never seen before. In the afternoon, off we go on smell patrol. This is an hour-long walk followed by frisbee catching. Buddy on a normal old-fashioned leash, Rossi on an extendable dog lead. Oh boy, smells everywhere! Of the whole wide olfactory world, with their powerful wet snouts, what will they strain on their lead to bury their heads in and smell together? This and shit, of course, of other dogs. What else would you be smelling? Flowers? When Buddy finds a nice pungent smell, Rossi races in to cop a bit of the action, cocks his leg and pisses on the old boy's head. That's not very nice, is it? 
This isn't a walk, it's a tag team outdoor shitting contest. Of course, we don't do all our business in one go. Oh, God no, spread the joy. Do a little bit, have their human manservant get out the scooper, get out the little bag, poop that scoop, scoop that poop even. Try not to get it on your hands or breathe in, and then off we go again until ten paces later. The shit continues. It was merely a shit hiatus, and repeat the clean-up operation. Then saunter on this afternoon shit part three. The runny bit, the cherry on the top, the fin de cycle, the coup de grace. Ah, that's better. Now, off we go to smell other dog shits and piss. Yay! Am I missing something here? Is this what having a dog is actually like? I, I know young animals of any species are obsessed with excrement, but... This is quite depressing. I thought there was more to dogs. I've been romanticising them all this time. When they're both on leads, Buddy, the sage old hen, knows not to go on the wrong side of a pole. Rossi, however, just goes where he wants. So you're constantly switching hands as he crosses the leads into a knot, all the time trying to hold the ball thrower, poo bag, and make sure the pooper scooper doesn't smear onto your clothes. It's like the little prick's doing it on purpose, trying to cut off the circulation to poor old Buddy's tail by ensnaring him with the long lead. This is a sadomasochistic twister for dogs. Rossi, the wee slip of a sheepdog, fancies himself as a, as a bit of a fighter as well as a non-consensual lover, of course, were passing by the back lot of a second-hand car garage. A fanged monster of a black bulldog is chained up to a concrete post. Rossi bounds forward, hackles up, his adolescent bark ricocheting off the buildings. The monster takes a run at us, gets to the end of his chain, and ping! The chain tenses as his paws scrabble on the gravel under him. Rossi, seeing he's in absolutely no danger, makes a beeline for the animal to wind him up. So, instead of pressing down to lock his lead, I give him loads of slack so he can't engage in the <gasps> Let me at him, let me at him! charade. So, when he gets to the same side of the road, he sees how fearsome his opponent actually is, how tenuous a prison that chain could be, and thinks the better part of valor is scarpering ASAP. An old man has been tramping along the pavement behind us, so as Rossi scampers back, crossing the two leads again, I step out of the old man's way while keeping an eye on the straining monster dog and then trip over poor old buddy. I land on my palms, trying not to land on the poor animal, while Rossi licks my face. And we all know where that tongue's been. Rossi's one talent is the physical grace he has on the ground and in the air when playing catch. He's agile and fast. Thus, he delights the kids in the estate by being able to catch anything you're, you'd care to throw in the air and repeat for a thousand times. Tennis balls, frisbees, sticks, anything that can be temporarily airborne and carried in his mouth. This is his work. This is his play. This, as the Americans say, is right in his wheelhouse. Hardwired genetically what he was bred to do. Everything else for Rossi is just waiting. I get sick of tramping around wet grass and take them up to some waste ground that was prepared to be built on and then left to go wild again. This is the Midlands after all. There are no doubt some interesting smells here. Buddy noses around happily. I unwisely take out the frisbee and throw it for Rossi, not thinking of the countless trip hazards and holes littering the ground. I'm not trying to kill the dog, okay? I'm just being slightly stupid. Rossi darts over hills and disappears into bushes, retrieving the frisbee. And I notice one of his front white paws is daubed with blood. Bollocks. All I have to do is keep this demon safe for a week, and I can't even do that. He's running normally, though, and doesn't seem to notice. It's raining heavily on the way home. All the cars passing. Look at the mad fella out walking dogs in a monsoon and then notice the blood running down Rossi's leg. I'm officially the meanest dog walker in Mullingar. I walk them till they bleed, baby. I get them home and run Rossi's paw under the outside tap. But he won't let me as he's too intent on catching the stream of water. The bleeding won't stop. So I use a trick I learned back in Nam and rip up an old brown t-shirt to tie around his foot. Rossi is still not understanding the concept of water. We're wet anyway, so I get out the garden hose to fully test this hypothesis. If I spray an arc, he will try and catch it in his mouth and get really, really frustrated when it slips through his jaws every time. So after 20 minutes of this, I've got wet feet, a drowned dog, and a flooded garden. Uh, but you've got to have your pre-water charges fun sometime. We go inside to get dry, of course. And uh, Rossi had pulled his nam bandage right off and waits until he's inside to shake pink water all over the hall and then drip blood all over the hall carpet race into the living room and jump on the couch the couch is beige i hate this dog maybe subconsciously i did try and kill him maybe i will yet 
I get a towel and dive on him like he's an alligator. I carry him back out into the kitchen, bandage him up again. He gives me the seal eyes from under his blue towel cloak and his attempted cuteness plays like a bearded wino wandering into a nativity play pretending to be the Virgin Mary. I wonder how I'm going to explain the blood to Joanna. Rossi licks me on the lips. At least if you exhaust the two of them on the walk, you get a few hours of peace in the evening after you feed them. Joe's mum has left detailed instructions as to who gets what. But he's the bigger dog and gets dry food mixed with a full can of meaty dog food and warm water. Rossi just gets dry pellets with half a sachet of yummy wet stuff. I think it's down to the tradition of not feeding sheepdogs meat so they don't get a taste for it. Either way, it provokes serious food envy. So we, I take to feeding Buddy first and keeping the terrorist in another room so he doesn't seal half of it. Even so, Rossi comes in and licks Buddy's bowl when he's done. I mop the blood up, throw a throw, I love throws, over the couch and check but, uh, Rossi's war wound, which has stopped bleeding. So, crisis averted. Rossi is a sheepdog. If your children are pestering you to get a dog, do not get a sheepdog because they will grow up and stop pestering you, but the dog never will. Oh, isn't he so intelligent? This dog doesn't understand water. Uh, no, if he was intelligent, he would some t have a tiny bit of genuine charm about him. There's no canine charisma here at all. The dog is an asshole. No two ways about it. What you doing? What you doing? Are you reading a library book? Can I know on the classic cover? Joe's dad thinks if he was brought back to the farm he came from, that would put manners on him, but we're not sure what improving his sheep rending skills would do to Rossi's behaviour as a pet. He'd be better off staying on the farm forever, but his owners do love him. So he's just going to have to learn some house etiquette before he does something even they won't forgive. When I bring them out to the green for the last thing at night run, Rossi demands a game of throw. Now, he can't see the tennis ball properly, so it takes him a while to find it each time. After one particularly long hunt, he finds it and takes a poo break. But then I've got to plot a course across the nighttime green that allows me to locate the poo. I throw the ball again, he can't find the ball, and I can't find the poo, until, that is, I step in it. Once I've wiped my feet in the grass, thus covering my shoes in grass, because they cut it but never pick it up. Sure, why would you do that? I haul the damn dog back towards the house, and Rossi stops dead at the threshold and refuses to budge. <laughs> what is this dog, a horse? He looks up at me. So, I have to remove the dog, for, uh, the leash for you to go into the house. Is that it? Fine. I comply to the terrorist demands, and off he sprints. A flash of white vanishing into the darkness. I found him three streets away, trying to gain access to a garage with a whining dog in heat on the other side. Joe's mum collected the dogs at the end of the week and gave us a lovely bottle of wine, some whiskey for hot toddies and brought white chocolate. Very generous. She's, she's a lovely lady. And we were glad to be of assistance and we will, of course, offer again to look after the dogs. Buddy, you are welcome any time. You're a real dog, a proper dog, a dog with integrity, a gentleman amongst dogs. Rossi, you are evil, pure evil, and you and I will dance again, my friend. If you do ever get a dog, look for a female, Labrador, Mongrel, that's been spayed. <laughs>